You're watching NASA TV. Well, good morning from Mission Control Houston and welcome to our live coverage of Russian EVA-50. That's the 50th spacewalk out of Russian airlocks in support of the International Space Station. At this moment, you're looking live on the Russian segment at the Poisk module where two spacewalkers, Russian cosmonauts Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov are currently inside. The hatch is still closed. Both cosmonauts have entered into their Orlan spacesuits and are in the process of depressurizing the area inside of Poisk. Um, so they're going to continue to bring that down all the way just to about vacuum before they open up the hatch and begin the spacewalk. I'm NASA's Dan Hewitt, and I will be taking you through everything over the next several hours today. This is the second spacewalk in just about a week to continue the outfitting and preparation of the Russian Nauka uh, Multipurpose Laboratory Module, or MLM, uh, the recently attached module to the Russian segment on the space station. Uh, there will be quite a few tasks today to get through, uh, some that were deferred from the spacewalk last week, uh, including uh, finishing uh, the connection of an ethernet or a data cable. Um, so just running through all of our tasks today. Uh, they're gonna continue finishing connecting that data cable that'll link the US segment and the MLM. Uh, that's going to be used as a redundant path for any payloads uh, housed in or on MLM in the future. Also providing a redundant path uh, for controlling the European robotic arm or the ERA on MLM that arrived uh, to service the Russian segment with the new module. Uh, they're also going to be redirecting an external monitoring unit. Um, it's uh, mainly used for uh, inspecting any plume impingement. All of the primary thrusters on the space station are located on the Russian segment. And as you use propellant in space, it does have the potential to leave a residue or um, interact with the surfaces on the outside of the station. So this is just a monitoring unit already installed that they're going to reorient for future uh, any operations. They have a number of bridge handrails, uh, essentially gap spanners, you may hear them called. Uh, these are just handrails that'll be installed along the outside of the MLM uh, to assist in translation or just moving around during future spacewalks at launch without these handrails and now they're being installed just to uh, assist in uh, any future spacewalks by these cosmonauts. Again, we, we're gonna have about a dozen, uh, just shy of a dozen total to do all of the outfitting of uh, the MLM module. Um, and so this will assist in all their future endeavors. They're going to be routing a number of cables today. So the, that first one, that ethernet cable, um, they're also gonna be connecting uh, some cables for the TV system uh, between the Russian service modules, Vesta and MLM, uh, to integrate their two TV, their video systems. Uh, they'll also be routing and connecting a cable between the cores units. So the cores is used for the automated rendezvous and docking of the Russian Progress spacecraft, the cargo craft. Uh, they'll be connecting a cable between uh, the service module and uh, the MLM uh, to um, to integrate the two and that will uh, assist in uh, the handoff that happens during the final approach of those progress vehicles as we'll be using MLM as a docking uh, target in the not too distant future. Uh, aside from that, they're also going to be installing a platform with some adapters on the outside of uh, the MLM that will be able to host any payloads in the future. Um, so that'll be one of the final tasks. Also, uh, one of the tasks that was deferred from last week, installing the bio-risk biological specimen containers outside of the Poisk module. These will be three containers that contain different samples that's exposing them to the vacuum of outer space um, to just determine their, um, their feasibility in that really harsh environment. Uh, the bio-risk also looking at things uh, like potential contamination, and we'll go through the study a little bit later. Um, and then one final task, again, time permitting, they'll just take survey photos of the Russian segment in the exterior. Uh, we'll see them taking photos quite a bit throughout the day 
as they continue to attach all of these cables, uh, usually taking photos of the final attachment point. And those all get shared with engineers down on the ground for a final review to make sure everything looks good. And we'll have a couple of connectivity tests throughout the day of the spacewalk as well um, as they get all of these different cables attached. So all told, uh, spacewalk planned to last just shy of six and a half hours, six hours and 26 minutes uh, in the exact accounting. Again, that's just an estimate of everything. Uh, we'll be going off the schedule pretty quickly once we get moving. Uh, but today it'll be Oleg Novitsky again. He's going to be EV-1 or in the suit with red stripes on it. So he'll be easily identifiable by just looking for the stripes. Uh, and then Pyotr Dubrov will be EV-2. This is the third spacewalk for each of these cosmonauts, uh, both previously completing two together uh, with a total of 15 hours and 13 minutes already on their spacewalking resume. And we'll be getting the helmet cams once they get outside. And you'll see a small 22 uh, in the bottom corner of Novitsky's helmet cam and a small number 20 uh, in the bottom corner of Dubrov's. So once they get out the door, We'll begin to get those helmet cameras looking over their shoulders as they work in the vacuum of space for about six and a half hours. And we heard the spacewalkers confirm the protective ring around the hatchway into the POIST module is installed. So now Pyotr Dubrov is going to be start, uh, is going to start making his way out of the airlock. Adjustable tether is secured on handle 6226. Copy that. Uh, now go ahead and um, take out um, uh, your adjustable uh, tether. And we expect it to take about 20 minutes for both crew members to get out and get their safety tethers uh, arranged while also bringing out the, the large uh, bundle of cables that they're going to be routing out of the airlock and then turning on their helmet cams uh, that will be looking over their shoulders on. And as we can see... And um, guys, um, Oleg and Peter, uh, just... Uh, a little bit of warning for you. In about 10 minutes, we'll be going into insulation. And um, in about 10 minutes, which is uh, right about that time, uh, we'll have uh, an expected uh, five minute LOS. Just uh, be forewarned. Copy. Thank you for letting us know. Now, Piotr, we just got to go from the specialist to activate your sublimators. And um, you guys both are also uh, go um, to take out the UKP cable carrier with SMMLM1 and SMMLM2 cable bundles out of the MRM2. Copy. This is Oleg. Uh, I just secured uh, the tether. And uh, Piotr uh, reporting that he's uh, working on turning on his sublimator. And uh, Oleg, you are going to turn on your sublimator as well. And uh, that's complete. And we're just about 31 minutes into today's spacewalk. Uh, the crew member have Crew members have uh, completed installing that cable carrier uh, on a handrail, and they did that photo survey of the antennas on the Progress spacecraft. Uh, so again, they're they're going to be splitting up at this point. Um, EV-1 Oleg Novitsky is going to move off to uh, get the cable reel of that Ethernet cable. Um, he's going to be routing that down uh, to a patch panel on the multi-purpose laboratory module. Um, and he'll be temporarily stowing the reel um, up by the Strela arm where they were just previously. Uh, meanwhile, Dubrov's going to move back and retrieve what's known as a gap spanner bundle. He's going to be installing a number of handrails um, along the multipurpose laboratory module um, to just help with any future translation or movement outside uh, of the lab module um, during future spacewalks. I have removed the safety tether. Copy. 
And now we're, I'm going to start uh, removing, uh, rotating and removing the wing nut. I hope it works easier than it did the previous time. I think it will be easier now. I have translated to PHO. Copy. Pressure on. Uh, uh, Peter, uh, go to the handrail 05. A copy, I confirm. I wanted to tell you right away that please do not hurry. Uh, it's going to be a longer VA. Please uh, 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 face yourselves. Copy. The wing nut uh, rotated to, to a certain position easily, and then now it got um, stuck, so I'm going to have to use a range. Okay, copy. It was expected. True. I uh, understand that the adjustable length tether is not a replacement for the safety tether. Okay, safety tethers are attached to handrails 4025 and 4026, adjustable tethering. Um, Link tethers are attached to 4025. Oleg, yes, go ahead. We are observing your complicated translation maneuver. You are near handrail 1500, and there are cables there, including the Ethernet cables. And in that cable grip, you need to move it so that it is oriented toward the MLM. Are, are you guys getting enough uh, light? Because the video that we're seeing is very dark. I personally have enough light. Me too. Okay, copy that. So let's breathe for a minute or so, and then we can continue. Anton. I feel that I'm getting warm because of the sun, and my temperature keeps going up. Okay, I do not insist. It's up to you. Um, you know better how you feel. Okay, got it. Let me secure myself here and pull it up. Okay. I will, if I get myself secured here, then I wouldn't be able to switch to the cable. So I will go to STU, and I think it's going to be more difficult to um, secure myself 
there. Rather, um, so that's why I'm thinking that I should go uh, there from uh, the attachment fixture. A little over two hours, 30 minutes into today's spacewalk, Oleg Novitsky and Piotr Dubrov continuing to work. Uh, they completed uh, a couple of their first major tasks of the day, uh, with Dubrov able to install uh, three new handrails along the Russian multipurpose laboratory module. Uh, the pair then worked together to uh, finish routing and mating an Ethernet cable uh, that had previously been uh, almost routed to the uh, MLM, uh, getting it kind of the last mile and then getting it uh, connected. Uh, they did run into a couple of issues uh, with the cable reel itself. Um, so Oleg Davitsky was able to take the cover off the reel and take the cable out and continue routing it. Uh, that cable reel was originally set to be jettisoned shortly after uh, the completion of uh, the cable routing, uh, but for now the cable rail itself is still installed in place in a handrail and then the cover uh, right now is planned to be jettisoned at the end of today's spacewalk along with uh, some other previously planned uh, multi-layer insulation covers that were set to be jettisoned by the cosmonauts. So we'll, we'll see that uh, flat disk make a reappearance later on in today's spacewalk. For now though, they're moving to uh, release and begin routing uh, two additional cable bundles uh, that have been sewed outside of the Poise module since the beginning of today's spacewalk. Uh, these will include another Ethernet patch cable that's going to link up uh, interfaces between the Russian service module and the MLM. Uh, also two cables connecting the two modules TV systems and then one linking up uh, the cores uh, systems on both of these modules that cores use for the auto automated rendezvous and docking of visiting Russian spacecraft, including the Progress and the uh, crewed Soyuz vehicles. So the crew is still about 20 to 30 minutes, uh, give or take down on their timeline. Again, today's spacewalk originally planned to last just shy of six hours and 30 minutes. And we are two hours and 30 minutes into today's spacewalk so far. So. Uh, they're going to continue to work now. They're going to be going in opposite directions at first, um, with Oleg Novitsky working his way towards uh, a patch panel on the Russian service module, where he's going to wait until uh, Pyotr Dubrov has finished routing the cable down to the MLM. Uh, they'll double check the, the amount of slack on either side, make sure that they can make all of the necessary connections uh, before they both then meet up down at the uh, patch panel, the connection panel yeah. on the MLM the to begin installing the cables. Oleg. Oleg. Okay, which one should I take, Pewter or me or what? The slack will come from Pewter. Okay. After you connect to plate 9 and attach the coil and then have them near handrail 2233, you will retrieve the cable clamps and pull the slack through that. Okay. I think I understood. Okay, Oleg. There are four connectors. Reading the numbers of the connectors. Are you seeing the decals? Not at this time. Not seeing where it can be. Okay, so I think
Half a pair, eight, two, three, eight, four, five and six should be there. Right. They were under the second one. So I got half a pair five and half a pair six. These connectors um, are unoccupied. Copy. You can connect to uh, the following. Uh, you can. I can connect the connectors to them, to the cables to them, right? Yes, correct. And these are high frequency connectors. And we are just over four hours, eight minutes into today's spacewalk. Again, originally timeline to last about six and a half hours. Uh, both Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov at the work site on the Russian service module to get these additional cables connected. And there's three cables that we're looking at getting connected to related uh, to tie together the TV systems between the Russian service module and the MLM. And then one final Ethernet patch cable getting put in place, after which we'll do another connectivity test. So we have managed to reduce um, the bend angle of the... And so once the cable. spacewalkers are able to uh, get these connected, they'll take, uh, again, some additional closeout photos of all the connections of the cables that can be uh, sent down to the ground for additional review, and then they'll be replacing the MLI, the multi-layer insulation, uh, those uh, white flaps that you can see them manipulating uh, that just provide some protection um, to all of the underlying electrical components from the spaceflight environment. I think that's how it goes. And then once all that's complete, they'll take a look at their, their current status and then make their way back over to the POISC module, their airlock for today's operations. Uh, the next task uh, on the list for them would involve taking out some, some larger hardware, uh, one a platform that can host future payloads and another one a payload itself, uh, both destined uh, for areas just outside of the uh, POISC module. And then assuming they're able to get those in place, there are some protective covers um, over the attachment points that'll get removed that were slated to be jettisoned. Uh, they'll be, assuming they get those off those covers, along with the uh, cover from the cable reel for the ethernet cable that's already been routed and connected uh, that was originally slated for jettison, that cover uh, will join those other protect protective MLI covers in a jettison at the very end of today's spacewalk. Uh, before they wrap up, do a final tool inventory, and make their way back inside of Poisk. But 814 goes under number four. Yes, it should be on the right side. I have a secured the handrail for a one zero zero to adjustable feather. Copy, Oleg. 
Может быть, э, Maybe. точкой сразу red сделать, а фон... Maybe the second point, a uh, second uh, touch point you can make red, and the transportation tether you can leave inside, and you don't have to take it outside. Okay, copy sounds good. Thank you. This is Mission Control Houston. We are just shy of four hours and 30 minutes into today's spacewalk. Uh, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov now meeting up at the patch panel number eight on the Russian service module. Uh, they've just got these three last cables to connect uh, and then reinstall the uh, multi-layer installation after they take some closeout photos and then we'll be done uh, with all of these uh, cable routing task for today. Well, with the handrail, it's uh, comfortable translating anywhere. Okay, I, Artem, I am here. I arrived at Peter's location. How should we uh, position ourselves? Uh, Peter, could you let Oleg go first? I would go, it's going to Hendrio 4100. So I'm going to panel 8 and further on. Could you repeat your last? I'm going to panel 8 and then I'm going to go along circular handrails. Yes. Uh, to the structural handrail and then you're going to go to MLM to the handrail 4000, 4001. Copy. And who are you going to be fishing for with the hook this size? Well, there are some wild beasts here. If you are willing and have a chance, could you please take pictures from this angle, how the cables from FGB towards the plate 18 are routed? I think it's a good opportunity here to take those pictures. Yes, I agree. I think I will be able to, to uh, take everything into the frame, so to say, to take picture of everything. Yes, Alec, could you please take pictures? So, Peter, have you stowed away the caps in the uh, cap keeper? Yes. Hooray. Success. Well done. So, do you want to take a break before you start connecting the connectors, Peter? Well, let me get to them first, and then I will take a breather. All right, it's up to you, Piotr. Okay, so there are no lanyards. The caps on the connectors are tight. Okay, so... And the handle is now in the way. And so five hours, 27 minutes into today's spacewalk, the two cosmonauts, they get the go to continue on their nominal timeline to move back towards the Poisk airlock and retrieve uh, the next two items that are going to get installed. Uh, one's the BioRisk, and that is a payload that's going to be installed outside of Poisk, uh, exposing different uh, samples from the ground to the spaceflight environment, the vacuum of space. Um, and then also looking to see them retrieve a platform with adapters. It'll be a passive uh, platform hosting site uh, for any future payloads outside of the Russian segment. You, uh, 
will need it. It's the wire cutters that you may need. So um, it's not clear how the beta pet tower is going to behave. Um, it's um, supposedly secured with uh, Velcro, but it's better to be safe than sorry, sorry, because there were way too many occasions when it didn't go as planned today. Five hours, 34 minutes, 33 seconds and counting into today's spacewalk. Both Oleg Novetsky and Peter Dubrov now back at the Poise airlock extracting the next pieces of hardware that they're going to be installing outside. Uh, first up is the BioRisk containers. Uh, these are part of a, a long-running experiment um, looking at obtaining data on any physical genetic changes um, in some microorganisms like bacteria, also fungi, uh, things that have a chance to be found on spacecraft equipment, so exposing them uh, to that uh, vacuum of space, that harsh spaceflight environment and low Earth orbit. Uh, all of this uh, being done to, uh, again, not only understand the viability of these different organisms uh, once they go into a very extreme environment uh, like low Earth orbit, but also understanding the chances of any surfaces of spacecraft potentially being contaminated once they uh, are sent up on missions. Um, one particular point of interest, um, any anything being found on exterior surfaces once we begin interplanetary missions. As obviously, you don't want to bring anything with you if you're searching for signs of um, past life or anything like that on the surface of a planet like Mars. Um, so the BioRisk is going to be exposing a number of different samples um, to that vacuum, that radiation environment of low Earth orbit and just continuing to inform uh, design processes on the ground, um, having a number of different Earth applications as well uh, in extreme environments and things like gas and oil pipelines. Please let us know because then we're going to switch to a different radiogram. It's the only one here? Yes. Okay, everything else is covers and ties and everything else. Okay, now I have it. Have the cable that's going away from the cable bay secured to the stanchion of the uh, handrail 22 in uh, inaudible. 2232. Copy, Piotr. And go ahead on space to ground one. And I am trying to take a video of everything. Now, Mark, when you close the hatch, please report, and then we are going to switch to a different radiogram. So, Oleg, should we start? Well, most importantly is for me not to be in the way of myself. Uh, what is most important is to leave and secure one transport tether to UKP so that we have more than one. Can it be an adjustable um, tether? Yep, it can work because we are going to be taking it inside later. And Arthur, are we going to attach anything else to this uh, handrail? That's the last one. 1716 is the MLI cable, the last one. So the MLI cable, the cover of that point, and the cover of the Ethernet uh, reel. So that's it. Uh, that is it. Three items. Oleg, when you were uh, taking out UKP, uh, is the um, tether that it was uh, secured, uh, was it left there? Is it the one with the spring? Well, I did take it off, and we can put it 
Somewhere around our feet, and it's not going to be too much in the way. There we go. Take the hook. Got it. Well, I have removed the wing nuts um, from Ugape, and all that's left is removing it, and I'll stand by for Oleg, and we can continue working. Copy. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to try. Sounds good. Aim first, Oleg. Have you removed the adjustable tether? Yeah, we have. So aim and then jettison. I think it's going pretty well. Copy, we see it. Just uh, please. Continue uh, filming it. I think I think it's going pretty well. I think I, it's a little bit too low. So it went uh, behind AO, and you can start with egress into MRM. Uh, we are going to run uh, to check that all um, add-on equipment is in place, and then we can egress. I am ready to start the ingress. I start ingressing the MRM. Copy. Okay, that was like done like a pro. Okay, okay, pull up, pull up your stomach. Is this uh, panel? All right, well, this is Mission Control Houston. We did get confirmation the hatch was closed. That hatch closed coming at 5.16 p.m. Central Time, 6.16 p.m. Eastern Time, 22.16 GMT. And with the hatch closed, the EVA comes to an end with a total length of seven hours. 25 minutes. Again, total EVA length of 7 hours, 25 minutes. Hatch close coming at 5.16 p.m. Central Time, 6.16 p.m. Eastern, 22.16 GMT. 7 hour, 25 minute spacewalk that began at 9.51 a.m. Central, 10.51 a.m. Eastern, 14.51 GMT. So all told, they accomplished every major task on their timeline today, starting off with uh, finishing up some routing of an Ethernet cable to integrate the uh, newly arrived multipurpose laboratory module with the U.S. segment, providing a data path for future payloads 
uh, and a redundant path for controlling the European robotic arm outside of MLM once it's up and running. Uh, they also were able to install three gap spanners um, that were originally on their timeline last week. Uh, those gap spanners, just large handrails to help with translation or movement around the outside of the International Space Station. Those were all successfully installed along with one additional gap spanner uh, on the front side of the or the forward-facing side of the MLM module uh, that was originally on this uh, spacewalk before the addition of a few more tasks. Uh, they then moved on to uh, additional cable routing, um, getting uh, both bundles out of uh, the airlock and then routed successfully between the, the service module and uh, the MLM. Uh, of those was another Ethernet patch cable just completing that data connection, um, two cables linking the television systems between the, uh, the SM and the MLM. Uh, and then one connecting uh, the core's antenna feeder units on both the Russian service module and the MLM uh, that will be used in um, visiting vehicle operations with the Russian Progress and the Russian Soyuz spacecraft uh, when they begin arriving to dock at the MLM uh, module. In addition to that, they were able to redirect a plume impingement and deposit monitoring unit. That happened right off the bat uh, pretty early on the spacewalk. Uh, that just outside uh, to uh, monitor the plumes or, or uh, essentially um, any of the, uh, the eject ejections coming out of the thrusters on the Russian segment as uh, all of the propulsive attitude control uh, found on the Russian service module and also used on Russian progresses uh, with MLM now being added to the mix soon for roll control. Um, so that's just a monitoring unit looking at surfaces um, outside. Uh, and how they're uh, interacting with any plumes coming out of those thrusters. In addition, they were able to uh, install the, the bio-risk containers of the bio-risk study outside of the POISC module uh, where they're going to remain and uh, be exposed to the vacuum of space as part of that long-running study. Uh, they also took quite a bit of photos of the exterior of the Russian segment uh, that will all be downlinked to uh, engineers and specialists on the ground for analysis, uh, both of their cable routing and, and just a, a, of several surfaces along the Russian segment. So all told, a very successful spacewalk today. Uh, again, that hatch now closed, the spacewalk coming to an end, seven hours, 25 minutes in length, ending at 5.16 p.m. Central Time, 6.16 p.m. Eastern. Okay, so a couple of numbers for you with Russian spacewalk number 50 now in the books. This was the 243rd spacewalk in support of International Space Station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades, the 11th uh, for the station just this calendar year, the sixth of which coming during Expedition 65. This was the third spacewalk for both Novitsky and Dubrov with a total spacewalking time on both of their resumes now of 22 hours and 38 minutes. All told, we've crossed uh, 1,500 hours well in advance of that, uh, 1,535 hours even of spacewalking time, and that equates out to 63 days, 23 hours, and zero minutes total spacewalking time on board the International Space Station.